11, 2023, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rob, if you want to do the prayer, thank you. Father God, as uh, we gather here tonight, Lord, that you will be with us and that you'll help us make decisions that are best for you and for this township. Lord, that you just uh, help us prepare our hearts for uh, the coming holiday, Lord. And to celebrate your son Jesus. I pray this all in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. You want to call the roll? Sure. Trustee Shape. Here. Trustee Rivera. Here. Trustee Clausen. Here. Trustee Benovo. Here. Supervisor Ballard. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, move agenda item. 4C um, to after uh, the return to open session number 14, in between 14 and 15. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have um, first? I'll start that motion. Okay. <coughs> I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, motion passes, thank you. And I'll also like to make a change, uh, number 12 on the agenda. Uh, move it up to before the clerk's report, <coughs> which I guess you consider maybe 3B. Okay. You get a second. Oh. We, we, need a, we need an initial motion. We need one motion. Yeah. I'll start. Okay. And, and I need a second. Angel second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with open. Uh, sorry, Let me just go back to. Um, we'll start with public comment then. Um, Ellen Moriarty. Ellen, you'll have three minutes. If you want, just want to give me one second so I can no, start. No, my name wasn't first. Well, the person who was first. You have your, your. You have the floor, Ellen. Go ahead. Three minutes. What happened to the person who was first? Baby? If you'd like to go, Ellen, it's your turn. No, I'm not going to speak. Okay, fine. Okay, Mike Carlson. I was first. So okay, I just so want to... Why wasn't I second then? Um, put order, here. please. Which way? Uh, Mike, this I way? will give you three minutes if you'd like to speak. I sure would. I would then love I'll to speak. I'll reserve the right to speak after Mike. So anything, you had that, chance. anything that that crazy woman says, she's nuts. I just <laughs> want to say... Excuse me? All the work that Mike Bonomo has put in for the seniors, for the vets, and his team... And they have done a great job. And all you people do is knock them down to the ground when this township is the only township I've ever seen that gives a rat's ass about anything. They care about anything that goes on in this town. They care about their seniors. They care about their vets. And you make comments on Facebook about every member here. You know, that's not right. Grow up. I'm not, I'm, don't talk to me. So, yeah, you are a senior. Why don't you help out instead of making a problem? And then you, you're sitting here talking about your supervisor, Ballage, over here, about how he did something. I heard you behind there about paying who paid for this, who paid for that. Do you know how much money this township has saved these people? <coughs> you guys need to grow up on Facebook Mike, with your 400 Mike, people. Direct, 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 direct to the with your 400 people. It's, it's ridiculous. I was looking into the camera, not her. So I, I just feel that people need to grow up. They need to stop talking crap about the board members on this township and work with them, not against them. You'll get more work done in this community if you're with them and not against them. Because I have never seen a freaking Christmas party like this. Tomorrow is going to be one of the best Christmas parties that this township has ever hosted. And these people work their tails off. I know that because I do a lot of volunteering myself. Last year I helped with the Christmas party and I was sore for three days. My legs were ready to fall off. And how dare anybody make fun of anybody that's trying to help with this Christmas party. There's nobody in town here that can hold 250 people. The Nauffles could have probably held them, but they don't have the kind of deals that this place made. And this, the Grand Crystal Ballroom in Lamont, they live in Homer Glen, and they have a great, great business over there. And you know what they did? They offered the township a hell of a deal that nobody could ever offer, and that's why it's there. Not only that, it's just not about the money. These people volunteer so much work, time, and effort into what they have to do. 
and you guys do nothing but rip on them and put them down. It's the same 10 freaking people on Facebook. It's the same group that comes here. You guys need to grow up and look at what's going on in your town and care about what's happening. That's all I got to say. I could go on for hours. Thank you, Mike. All right. Uh, Jim Shea. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> I hear a lot of talk about um, you guys need to represent everybody, you know, you need to represent this group, you need to represent that group. Well, you represent the most diverse group in this township, in this country. Okay, this group is every ethnicity, right, and every background. The group that you represent is the taxpayer. Okay, and you've been fighting for the taxpayer since you got here. Um, what does the taxpayer want? I mean, they just want basically lower taxes, which is what you've all been giving them. Mike Gondek just got here. He's already saved the township probably twenty, maybe fifty thousand dollars with what he's been doing. Uh, Red Port Philly. Every time he opens his mouth, he saves a hundred thousand dollars for this township. Uh, with Angel and Mike Lawson and myself, we got together with Steve. We saved a hundred thousand dollars over at Founder Circle by just fixing different problems, okay? $100,000, it's been, I don't know, it must, must be in the millions so far, okay? Everybody on this group has been saving the taxpayer money. And that's who you represent, the, the taxpayer. Now, this is a true democracy. This isn't, you know, we don't have a, a Congress and a Senate here. We don't represent disparate, disparate groups from different, uh, you know, areas of the township, okay? We, uh, we represent the majority. This is a, a, a true majority rules government here, okay? And who is the majority? The majority is the taxpayer, okay? 33,000 people live in Homer Township. There's 14 churches in a four square mile radius, okay? 90% of these, these 33,000 people identify as Christian. Even if they say they don't go to church, they still identify as Christian. And that's the majority that you represent, okay? Why aren't they here backing you up, okay? All they know is what they see and what they hear on Facebook and what they see here in these meetings and what they see in here is chaos, okay? They don't remember that you saved them millions of dollars. They have a short memory, okay? So you need to send them a message so they can understand that you're on their side, all right? That message is... No, okay? When they want to put a big giant middle finger up right next to the nativity, flipping off 27,000 people in this township, okay, you need to send a message to the taxpayers that you got their back. You need to say no. Not just no, but hell no. We're not going to put up with it. Because when the next pandemic comes around, who's going to be on our side? The same guy who was last time, who said, no, we're not doing the vaccine, we're not doing the mask thing, we're not doing it. Okay, we see how that turned out. That was a scam. Ten seconds. Right? So the taxpayer, they just want you to have their back. And when you have their back, they'll have your back. Okay? Thanks. Okay, so the next uh, agenda. Yeah, you're Clerk Frozen. You got uh, approval of the minutes. Sure. If uh, you guys can all look at your packet, I do have the November 6th monthly township board meeting minutes in there. And I'd like to get a motion to approve those minutes. I'll start that motion. I'll second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? <clears throat> okay, motion passes. Thank you. Um, the second item is motion to approve and release or not release the November 23rd, 2021 executive meeting minutes. I would like to see a motion not to release those minutes. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, same with the next one. I would ask uh, not to release those minutes. I'll start that motion. I'll second. All in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. And the same with the fourth one. That's I'll all. start that motion. Okay. <coughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, any nays? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Um, the next item, Steve, did you want to talk about the tax abatement? No. 
Okay. Do it right now. Okay. So motion to approve tax abatement for the township's general obligation bonds series 2021 in the sum equal to the levy. I'll start that motion. I'll second. Okay. I will take roll call for that one. Uh, Trustee Rivera. Yes. Trustee Shea. Yes. Trustee Clausen. Yes. Trustee Bonomo. Yes. Supervisor Ballage. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. And we move 4C to after 14. So that concludes my report. Okay. We're going to the supervisor report, and uh, first thing on there is uh, Hadley Road. Uh, they're trying to make, the county wants to do five lanes, two lanes in each direction with a center turn lane, and it's already rated for 80,000 pounds, so it will be a truck route. So when the trucks get off of 355 and they want to go east, they're going to be using it without a doubt. And the traffic will increase also. And where we have a problem is it's a little different than when you go east of Bell Road where they already have that type of configuration. The west end, there's all kinds of houses with driveways. And a lot of those driveways are flag lots where you have three or four houses deep. So you're making it so it's almost uh, a serious safety problem for them to come out of their own driveways. There's also uh, farms there, and the people with the farm animals, when they come out, they're not going to be able to make a left because the cars are going to be going too fast. They'd have to cross two lanes plus the uh, turn lane, and it's not safe for their animals because the animals aren't a trailer. So if they're going to go that much, they're going to be falling. So what will happen? The people on those farms have to go west. They have no choice. Then they got to figure out how to turn around to go back east. If they have to go east. So then they, you know, it's a problem for everybody. It's a problem for anybody that lives up east of Bell also because those trucks that are coming down from the expressway, they're going into Orland Park or Cook County somewhere. And those trucks are going to go east of Bell. So all the subdivisions east of Bell off 143rd are affected also. Now I'm on the county board also, and uh, I brought this up that we don't want that here. And uh, our road commissioner there said that uh, they got $7 million in 2012 to do that. And so I told them in 2012, it was a different circumstances. There were no warehouses then. We didn't have anything like we have then, now. So things changed. So I've uh, been working with the board, and we got the Republican caucus right now entirely on our side, and two of the Democrats, so that's enough to carry the vote to stop it. And I'm sure that the uh, road commissioner is very upset about it because he's going to have to give the $7 million back. But at the same time, here, we all live here. We can't have something that's going to be unsafe. Now, putting one lane in each direction and a center turn lane would not be intrusive at all, and it would be a lot safer, and you wouldn't have any traffic jams, because the only time that road jams up is somebody makes a left. So the best thing to do if you're watching this, is send an email to the county board at willcountyillinois.com, the whole word, Illinois, and express your opinion. When the last meeting we went to, they read <clears throat> emails for about 45 minutes. And there were about somewhere around 35 people that came and spoke against it. And that's in the middle of the day when people took off of work. So the first Tuesday in would be January is when they're going to have the next meeting. And they're going to uh, take it to a vote of the committee. And then it's going to go to the full board for a full board vote because there's so much controversy about this. So like I said, it's a real important issue for everybody here. So you can send emails to County Board at willcountyillinois.com. And if you want to show up, the meeting's at 9 a.m. 
at the county building, 302 North Chicago. It's second floor. So I would suggest that anybody that lives off 143rd Street, and even if you don't, if you're in Pebble Creek and you want to get out on 143rd Street, good luck. Because you're going to have to come out and you, unless you're going to make a right, you're going to have a problem. This <coughs> district 92 school district, they came to the board meeting and spoke against it. They said it's dangerous for their buses. So, again, we need the people to show up, and if you can't show up, at least send an email. Okay, and then the Hadley Road thing isn't on here, but uh, the village of Homer Glenda was uh, given the road by the county. So uh, as of right now, Homer Glen has Hadley Road. They refuse to give me a written answer as to why they did not give us the jurisdictional transfer first, because we were the first ones in there. And they're, they're just using an excuse that they said township can't take it. And I disagree with the state's attorney, and I told them that it's only an opinion, so now I want it in writing. And I have yet to get it, and the uh, chairman of the board has asked for it in writing. So we're probably going to get it in writing. But it's very reluctant, so that means that if they don't want to give it to us, I'm of the opinion, even if it says that they can't do it, that it's not necessarily correct, because state's attorneys are only opinions. <clears throat> so if we listen to a wrong opinion, that's on us. But at this point, uh, giving it to the village, that's fine. As long as the village is going to protect the road, the township has no problem with it. We just don't want to see that road go into a truck route, which was going to be planned. That was going to make it so you could go right through Hadley and the Orland Park and the rest of Cook County. And just letting everybody know that as long as I'm on the board, I'm going to be fighting against that because, in my opinion, they want to make through streets for trucks coming from that expressway. So if they do it at Hadley and they do it at 143rd, well, what one is next? 167th? Because that stops and it connects to Hadley. Uh, 151st Street, that's not their road, but are they going to try to push it for 151st? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that it seems to me that they're trying to send trucks up our streets and um, we're doing the best we can to stop it. The township board voted no. And so we maintain no. And we maintain in favor of the people at Hadley Road also. So with that, I'll move on to the next item. Uh, zoning case uh, CZ2315. Uh, I sent that on an email to you guys. <coughs> Did anyone uh, have a problem with that? No. I didn't either, no, but those are right. okay. So then we can uh, just move on with that. There was no problem. I could send it to the county and tell them that uh, we don't have a problem with it. Um, discussion of uh, agreement sent to the village of Homer Glen to remove. Do we need a motion for that? If you're not opposing it, I don't. No. Think so. Okay. All right. Okay. If no. you're opposing it, I would recommend. Then we motion. would need it. Yeah. But okay. no, we're just going to say it's okay. If you're not going to object or submit an objection, right. I think it's okay. Okay, then discussion of uh, agreement sent to the Village of Homer Glen to remove Homer Township property from the Village of Homer Glen and take it back as unincorporated property. Uh, as of yet, we haven't uh, got an answer, really. So I don't know. Uh, it's still up in the air. Uh, the Village still has, you know, it's going on the uh, referendum to dissolve the township. And, you know, the, the language that's coming out of the Village is kind of confusing. But um, I don't know exactly where they're going, but uh, the whole bottom line is if they're working to dissolve the township, the township is not going to sit back and do nothing. Township is going to fight to keep the township going. The township, in my mind, is the only thing preventing the village from doing things to people that they might not like. Because if there's no township, what unit of government is there to protect you if you're in the village without the township. You can come to the township and if the township board agrees, we are there to protect you. It's happening already with Hadley Road. 
That was the first one. The village of Homer Glen, the mayor came to the uh, meeting and said she doesn't want 143rd Street uh, to have truck route either. So thank God for that. So the village and the township are on the same side. We have a better opportunity of winning. But again, if you look what you get for when you're in Homer Glen, the city, you get rules, regulations, and taxes. And everything else comes from a, a private company or a government body. So you don't really get much by being part of the village of Homer Glen. So when they say you don't get anything from the township, think about it. What do you get from the village of Homer Glen? Absolutely nothing. The township, you do get things. You get the senior stuff. We do stuff for vets. We will be doing stuff once we get to Civic Center. We will be doing a lot of things with kids, a lot of things with uh, special need kids. We plan on having at one, we're not in the beginning because we don't have enough money at first, but we have people working on grants. But we do plan to have special needs basketball there. We do plan to possibly have after, after school programs there. We'd like to see a kitchen and have special need kids that are able to work it, work it and run it under guidance of uh, some volunteers. So there's a lot of things that we're going to be able to do once we get that Civic Center that we were unable to do. And thank God that we have grant writers. The clerk has taken a class, and uh, Angel's been working with the other, with the actual grant writer we hired. And we feel really positive that we're going to be able to get that thing done by the summer of next year, the end of the summer. And once we do, Everyone's going to enjoy all the different things that we're going to be able to offer without raising property taxes. Everyone needs to know that. Even though costs went up for everybody, the township has not raised the taxes. We froze it. And we froze it last year, froze it this year, and we're going to try not to raise it next year because I don't want to raise taxes at all. We have to find ways within our budget. The road commissioner feels the same way. Carmen Morella, the assessor, he feels exactly the same way. He's not here right now. But just know that we do not want to raise taxes ever if we can. And if we can reduce them again, we will. So I'll go on to the next item. Uh, farming license uh, bid solicitations were published for the Welter Farm. Uh, we had only one proposal and it was for $60 an acre, so I need a motion to approve Jeff Haas for $60 an acre for uh, four years. I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion. All right, I'll take a roll call. Trustee Bonomo? Yes. Trustee Clausen? Yes. Trustee Shake? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Rivera? Yes. Supervisor Ballage? Yes. Um, I have to make a comment. Mike, I forgot to read the ordinance for the abatement of the taxes. And I believe I'm supposed to be reading that. Is that correct? It's not commonly done where the ordinances are read word for word. It's not. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I, I don't think it's necessary. Since it's been presented. It, it's, okay. it was described okay. in sufficient uh, okay. uh, Very particularity, good. you know, when you voted on it and it's on the agenda. Just so wanted forth. to make sure. <laughs> okay, I, I'm right. sure it's available for public inspection, obviously. Yes. Okay. Um, all Perfect. Those things still. All right. So, yeah, no, I, I think you're okay all right. not Thank having you. read it word for word. All right. Thank you. Okay, then we're going to move on to the Highway Commissioner's Report. Happy holidays to everybody. Um, <coughs> first item, uh, the Smith Road Long Run uh, Creek Bridge Replacement out in the northwest uh, corner of the township. I don't know if any of you have been over there. It's a, it's a bridge that's in bad shape and needs to be replaced. Um, we're getting relief for 80% of the costs for engineering and construction by entering into an IGA with uh, City of Lockport and the Township Lockport Township Road District, along with IDOT. So we're saving the taxpayers a lot of money there, <coughs> over a million dollars. Um, so because this is a long-term engineering uh, cycle, it's going to be about three years. And because of that, um, we're waiting for temporary bridge shoring options to make sure that people that go across the bridge aren't going to collapse the bridge because it's in really bad shape. So. The phase one consulting engineer has been uh, looking at the bridge and I'm waiting for options for uh, 
temporary bridge shoring. For that, I have a status meeting with them uh, tomorrow morning. Um, the 2024 roadway paving program was a, was a success. Um, we're right now assessing our other roadways and bridges and culverts and sewer to see what we can improve in the next year. We, uh, we're going to try to focus on uh, subdivision streets and arterials at the same time if we can. Our goal is to hit about two miles. That's our, what our budget is typically from year to year. Um, the roadway lighting program is still in cycle. The materials that were ordered by the contractor had uh, delivery issues. We're postponing it until the spring of next year, unfortunately. The foundations will be poured first thing in the spring in April. Um, the Highway Commissioner's Grant, it, we, uh, we decided to extend the, uh, the applications until 12-31-2023. This was noted on the Homer Township Highway website, and it's also on the Homer Township website, I believe, right, uh, Ms. Bozen? I, so. um, I think we have, we have two or three applications right now, so I'm, I'm excited about it. We should be announcing the winner in January. And lastly, um, we've had a couple of snow events and salting events already this year. Um, just to reassure all of, our, um, all of our residents, we have four trucks now equipped with uh, salt spreaders and plows. Um, at any one time we have between two and three people out plowing and salting. Um, we do have a truck on reserve. We're operating at a two, to, two and a half to three hour salt and plow cycle, which is excellent. Um, that's pretty much the, uh, the, the standard that's followed by most road districts. Um, typically our first round of salting and s snow removal is at four to five a.m., well before rush hour, which helps most people. Um, we ask that you please be careful and, and uh, understand that bridges freeze before roadways um, because there's air passing both below and above the decks. <coughs> so be careful on bridges locally. We want, you to, we want to you to watch out for black ice, obviously, when you're walking. And also, um, when it snows, please park in your driveway if you can to allow our plows to go up and down the streets without having to do uh, tow vehicles, which we don't want to do. If you have issues, you can contact me on my uh, cell or on, at 708-301-246, or you can email us. Um, and that's everything that I got. Thank you, Brent. Mm -hmm. uh, Carmen Marilla has no report. Uh, we'll move on to the trustee committees and trustee reports. First one would be Senior Task Force, uh, Mike Bonomo and Cindy Laha. Well, yeah, I'd like to say a couple things. First of all, as, as was mentioned, um, we have a big day tomorrow. As, as a senior task force, we have our senior Christmas party. Um, excuse me. Um, this is a build up from uh, two and a half years of, that I've been part of the senior committee. Uh, between myself and Cindy Laha, Angel, and I, I could probably mention about 30 names over the course of the last two and a half years that have been volunteering their time to help us with all the events that go on with the seniors, whether it's the expo, a gardening event, um, what else have we done? We've done uh, the reeds, crafts. The Christmas crafts, uh, again, and the expo and has got gone has gone viral and has, gone, has uh, gained notoriety. I'm getting calls from people outside of the state, or actually from the state of Illinois, uh, actually the Illinois state of aging, wanting to get involved with what we're doing. Um, and I'm not one that, Comments on uh, comments that are made towards me or directed at me on Facebook, but I was told I was incompetent in the decision that was made to move our venue from uh, Coombs Corner to a banquet in Lamont. And I want to explain the reason why we made that decision. And in terms of the definition of competent, which I read, is having the necessary ability, knowledge, or skill to do something successful. I think we're pretty damn successful with what we've done for seniors. I have 240 people signed up to attend our event tomorrow. Um, we couldn't have done it without the banquet. And I'm going to go back as far as I've known the family that owns the banquet for the last 20 years. I coached their daughter in soccer, so that led me to them. They actually contacted me to offer their help. And they offered a deal that nobody else could offer. We did Taz's, which everyone knows is my cousin, Rosie and she couldn't fit the amount of people that we have signed up for this event. Nobody in Homer Glen can, so I don't know what people expect from us. So Lamont, again, 
I think they represent technically our community because they're in the surrounding area and they live in Homer Glenda family, so we chose them. And shame on those who question our decisions, which were made as a group. Between Cindy Laha, myself, and Angel, we have worked countless hours with Vicki, Patty, everyone, again, there are a lot of people in this room, have put countless hours, not days, or even days, into what we've done leading up to this event. Okay? And I, I, I mean, I, I can't thank them enough. And I always say it's the seniors that we do this for, not for ourselves. I mean, there's unelected officials that help out, take time out of their day. I like tomorrow, I'm taking a whole day, you know, I'm taking a day off of work to work this event for the seniors. That's how much it means to me. And we've had people donating money, gift baskets out of the blue. Um, we had someone come in uh, last week with $500 gift cards from Jewel for the senior event. Gift cards galore, hundreds of dollars donated to this event without having even to ask. So what does that say about our community for the ones that think we are competent in what we do? Okay. I'm not going to stop helping the seniors no matter what kind of backlash I get because we're doing it for the right reasons, we're doing it for the right thing. And I'm sick and tired of people. We have, a we have an application on our website to apply to volunteer for any of our committees, mine probably being the most, most prominent, and people have gotten up to this voting question and why we don't accept volunteers, whatever. Fill out the application and, you're, and we'll review it and we're more than welcome to put you on if we choose to do so. So. For, again, for those that criticize, they want to take over the committee, they're more than welcome to. But I will not, I will not give it up without a fight. And I personally don't think they can do as good of a job as all of us can. I'll never take credit for doing what we do. It's a we, not an I thing. And um, again, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. You'll see pictures on Facebook of 240 happy seniors. And every month we have 100 plus coming to our senior bingos and join their, themselves. And next year, and we've talked about it, I'm going to blow it out of the water. We're going to do so many events that I hope they get sick of it, to tell you the truth. So that's my goal. And we have the volunteers and the group to, to make it happen. And again, um, for those who criticize and criticize our Christian values and what have you, shame on you. And uh, again, I'm never going to stop doing what we do. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to the Special Needs Committee. Uh, Angel Shake, uh, Brent Profilio, and Mike Gondak. And uh, just so everybody knows, there's not a real lot going on yet, but there's going to be a real lot coming up real soon. <clears throat> as soon as we get that Civic Center going, you're going to be shocked at all the stuff. And I personally want to thank Mike Gondak for all the work he's been doing with this. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Know, you. You, you've been a savior. Do any of you guys have a report you want to talk about? Or? Uh, Mike um, sounds like has a report. Mike does? Actually. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I got a report on uh, updating our communications and our brand market. <coughs> so uh, the township since 1836 has always been about keeping taxes low and involving the local talent. So our current brand mark that we have is up there. You can see it. And uh, for those of you who can't make it up, it's a tree that goes in with roots and it's holding in a very motherly fashion a seedling. And that was done in a competition, a student competition we have. And that logo was done with a lot of love, and it really symbolizes Homer very well. So I tried to capture a lot of that vision into a new logo that we have. Now, we want an upgrade from that logo just so we can upgrade, so we can work in various print processes where that logo might not reproduce as well. And also just to have more pop at a distance. So uh, what I want to say is, uh, so a young child a long time ago gave Jesus two, uh, two fish and five loaves of bread. And with that, Jesus fed 5,000 people. So with this concept, we're going to take and advance it to a new age and uh, help out the 41,000 residents of Homer with this uh, seed that came from this concept right here. <coughs> so this is what the new logo looks like. Hopefully it's more readable at a distance. This can reproduce in anything you want to do. Whether you want to do vinyl cut, reproduce in stone, wood, litho, rhodo, revere, flexography. So. None of the colors touch, so you could uh, do embroidery and all sorts of things with this logo. We got a brand guide for this that's uh, like 18 <coughs> pages long. But let's see, the important parts of this is at the top, if you can see, there's two versions of the logo. There's a horizontal version, and then there's a, a square version. So we have, two, we have versions that will fit on any size item you want to put it on. And the whole brand guide has all sorts of different things, such as you know how to 
handle readability with the logo. Alternate colors you can use with it, things you should do with the logo. Bless you. A whole bunch of things you should not do with it. But I think the more interesting things I'll show is how does it look when you actually put it on something. You know, we have the typography guys. You know, so here's how it looks. You use that version on the t-shirts. You can see from a distance, even make out that it says Homer Township on the logo with this new one. And it just works in even in, in digital formats, RGB works well. So this logo should serve us very well, I hope, and I'm very honored to have been able to work on it. But along with this logo, we're also updating the website. You might have seen some changes. Some of you visited the website. It used to have 12 items in the main navigation. We've taken that and moved it down to seven total items. Now, we haven't really removed anything. We've just organized it more logically and better. We did that using something called a site map. Every single page was mapped out, and it was remapped to a new, more logical location. Uh, some pages were removed that didn't just make any sense. The calendar page didn't have any calendar events, so no reason I want to go there. But I do plan on bringing that back once we bring in a module that can really handle doing calendar events well, because I think that's important for the community to know what events we have going on. So we're going to bring that back. We're going to bring it back working. I uh, just want to say if uh, anyone's going to be uh, doing any kind of public facing communications, please start using the new logo. You're going to get an email from me with access to it and the brand guide so you know how to use it. But use me. You know, don't, don't try doing this yourself. You know, I've been doing this professionally for over 35 years. I'm an Adobe certified expert. I've traveled from Washington, D.C. to Washington State teaching people how to do this stuff. So I'm here to help out with that. And uh, during the Christmas break, I'm pretty open. I'll, I'm going to get busy after the first of the year, but I want to get us through this and with a new brand, and I hope that's going to serve us well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mike. You, Mike. Mike. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. We we'll Oh, did you come to No, we're not done. Okay. We got the resource management task force. Um, that's the whole board, basically. And nothing's really going on there. Uh, other than I, Angel might want to talk about the uh, inventory thing that you and Mike were setting up. Yeah, I mean, we're working on the inventory. Basically, right now, it's just a spreadsheet where, you know, um, the maintenance guys or whoever, you know, is working at uh, Founders or any of the other, you know, residences. They just uh, send us, a, you know, an update every day what they use. We remove it off the spreadsheet. Um, you know, sometimes we have to tell them, like, hey, we're running low on this or that, you know, can you be aware to go purchase it? But that's just basically it. It's just so we're trying to um, go through our existing inventory so we don't spend any extra money. And, um, you know, it kind of helps because I know we've needed just a couple of little things at Founders the last few days, and we knew that we could just look on the list and, like, oh, we have this. It's in this closet. So um, that's about it. So they know you know, where it's located now. You guys have done a good job with that, Mike. You know, you and Angel. God bless you. Um, move on to uh, the Land Use Committee. Uh, that was what we already talked about. That was like a plan commission thing. And we just talked about that in the beginning. I forgot the line item, but we all thought it was okay. So move on to uh, Founders Crossing Task Force. That's Mike Clausen and Angel Shake. Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, first and foremost, we did a little bit of changing things around at Founders. So, we gave the residents um, a magnet, a big magnet, so that it could be read easily because I have a hard time seeing stuff. So, I figured um, just gives them kind of a, a chain of command to follow if there's any issues. Um, so, the new chain of command is to either call um, Mike or myself. And then we um, dispatch it out to one of the guys. If it's during the day, we can go to any of the guys. If it's after hours, um, we usually go to Jimmy because you know he lives closest. Um, it's worked out really well because we've had a lot of things happen after hours um, where somebody can get there. Some um, you know somebody can get there when there's an emergency really quickly. Plus, it's worked out with the snows that we just had and everything. So. Um, most important thing is we just want to let everybody at Founders Crossing know that there will be no rent increases for 2024. So um, whatever your rent is, 
you know, right now that's where your rent will be for 2024. There are no rent increases for 2024. And that's about it. And thank you, Angel. Mike. Uh, Rob, do you have anything? No. Okay. Steve, I'd like to recognize the, the extra effort that uh, Jim Shake and Angel Shake put into Founders Cross. It's that really that. impressive the stuff that I, we know. That, but the stuff that we know that they have done is uh, really above and beyond. And uh, I'm proud to know both of them. Good work for compiling a, a dollar amount of uh, money that we've saved the township and uh, we're going to we're going to send it out on uh, our email blast from the township and we're also going to uh, on our website once we get it but we're going to be able to show all the money that we've saved because we have qualified people that work for the township and volunteer for the township that we would you have to pay a lot of money to get done you know, like Mike Gondad, I don't know what he charges per hour. My guess is probably about two or three hundred dollars an hour. You know, because he's highly skilled and he's putting in countless hours for us at no cost because he's with us. Um, Mike Clausen, he builds bridges like I 80, <coughs> and his expertise <coughs> is in building. And he's with Angel, who was a project manager at one time. You know, so it's all jiving. And Jimmy Shake, which uh, you, a lot of people that uh, go on Facebook complain about, he's a skilled <laughs> tradesman in many facets, and he doesn't get $53 an hour. He works for us because he likes to work close to home with the township. <clears throat> Same with Bonomo. Mike, he has a business and he takes off, I don't know how many days a week it take off, I mean a month, you know, but it, you, probably at least six, seven, just to do what you're doing. Robert Beer, when we have trouble with our HAV stuff, he comes out and he helps us decide how to, how to address it. We don't know. Instead of paying somebody, we have somebody that understands how to do it, because that's what he does for a living. You know, so, uh, Brent, Look what he's doing over uh, the Civic Center, all the excavating stuff with our guys. So we save tons of money. So when, when I say we don't raise the taxes, but we get a lot accomplished, that's how we do it. We're getting it accomplished because we're using the people that we have to get these jobs done and it's not costing the taxpayers money. And, and everybody that's doing this is volunteering because they like what they're doing. They live here. And they go along with the concept of fixing where we live. And so I'm really proud of this whole group because while we're not raising taxes, if you look at all these other government bodies, they're all raising taxes. Because everything went up. The cost of gas went up, although it's dropped a little now, thank God. Electric's gone up, the cost of materials gone up, everything's going up. But the township is not going up because of all the efforts of everybody here. So I think that's real important to be said. So uh, again, one, I want to add something too about the whole Founders Crossing with Jimmy and Angel and Mike on board. Uh, one thing, the most, you know, the, the seniors are the most treasured people in our community. We, you know, they, they're the ones that you know they've been here the longest, obviously. And what they've done, they've gained the trust of the residents of Founders Crossing. And I'm, I'm sure they've, they'll have countless stories of uh, you know, all the hard work that they've done voluntarily, I might add. Um, they've gained the trust. And they can, you know, it's, it's real difficult to knock on someone's door and get them to answer. And I think uh, they've gotten to a point to where they do because they know they're going to get the help. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, and I did, again, we have to commend their efforts on what they're doing right now. And I just forgot about Jay Rohde. He donates. I hate to bring it up, but it, it, we're talking about saving money. Something breaks that's electrical, we call Jay Rohde, and he comes and fixes it. He doesn't have to fix it and not charge us. He fixes it and doesn't charge us. So, you know, again, and he's not even a trustee. He just lives here, and he believes in our township. And there's other people, too, I can't think of, like 
Mike Carlson, he <coughs> donates time with all the music for everybody. I mean, everybody donates something. We're all, everybody is working on the same page to try and make this a better place to live, because it is where we live. So the next thing we're going to do is a motion to approve all payment of bills for November 2023, Founders Crossing Bond, Founders Crossing General, General Assistance Open Space, Park Developer uh, Contribution, Park Town Road and Bridge, and Equipment and Building. You got a motion for that? I'll start the motion. I'll second. Okay, I'll take a roll call. Uh, Trustee Shake? Yes. Trustee Claussen? Yes. Trustee Bonomo? Yes. Trustee Rivera? Yes. Supervisor Ballage? Yes. Motion passes. Thank okay. you. I have one thing for new business. Uh, last month there was a lot of commotion about uh, having our uh, maintenance guys go get a CDL so that they could drive a truck. Well, I knew what was coming, but I wanted to wait till I had a time frame. So February 2nd, one of our maintenance guys that's uh, more or less the foreman, I don't know the right term for it, but I think we call him foreman. Yes. Maintenance foreman, he's going to retire, and we're not going to replace him. And you might say, well, how are you going to do that? Well, we have the road district people who need our people on occasion to help, and we have our maintenance crew that on occasion can use the road people to help. So now instead of hiring another person, we're going to be using on the township side, if we have a problem and we need extra help, we're going to call up Brent and we'll get one or two of his guys to come over and help us. And if they need help, they'll call us and we'll send one or two of our guys over. When our guys go to help them, they have to have a CDL because they can't drive a snowplow truck without a CDL. So when you look at the big scheme of things, sending them to get their CDL is a hell of a lot cheaper than hiring a person and paying all the stuff that corresponds with it, all the benefits. It's already getting benefits. And it's nothing for them just, you know, in the winter, there's less maintenance things. There's a lot of it has to do with uh, maintenance of all our equipment, where they have to go in and work all the equipment, get it all ready for spring. But on snow days, they can help the road district, and they've got two extra trucks. So if there's a big snow, we've got people to go out and do it. We don't have to uh, go out and look for somebody, please help us. We don't have to do that. We have our own here by joining both of them together. So we're saving a boatload of money. Again, that's how we don't raise taxes, by working together as a unit instead of having each individual person in charge of their own little fiefdom. We all work together here, and that's why your taxes aren't going up. And if we didn't do that, your taxes right now, you definitely would have a tax increase if we weren't working together. I'll tell you that right now, because all the costs of everything has gone up. But because of this, because of the synergy that we have, we're able to keep everything without raising taxes. So that's so important. So um, I just wanted to point that out because we had that uh, discussion last month and I think it wasn't clear, and I hope it's clear now. And so we'll move on to old business and um, there's really nothing but the micro pantries which uh, people finally realize we got them so they're taking stuff from there. So we do need volunteers to give us stuff in the micro pantries. So we are, when there's nothing left in there, we are going out and buying stuff from the township. So we have food for these people, but, and animal food. But the people are even putting clothes in there, God bless them. But there's, a lot, there's one there and there's one over by Billy Malley Saloon on uh, Golden Oak, you know, where he has the uh, haircut place. So, Please, if you want to donate food, we could use the food. Just bring it over there. And if you need stuff, go there and take it. And we also have the Lockport Fish Pantry. Uh, Hadley Road, you talked about the Tuesday meeting. Which committee meeting were you referring to? John Ronaldson's Land Use Executive 
I figure you were asking this why I let you <laughs> It's the uh, Public Works and Transportation Committee on Tuesday at 9 a.m., the uh, first Tuesday of the month. And um, that's the, where the road commissioner will be at. And uh, like I said, maybe he doesn't care, but I get the feeling like he's not happy with uh, what we're doing. Mike? Okay, since the topic was brought up, can I ask a question about that? Kind of a, a visual. It, the way I understand that project, the 143rd project, is to, to, to visually see 159th where 143rd is right now, right? Is that, is yeah, that they the want the same the residents thing. watching? That's what they want that to look like. Yeah. So if you want 159th on 143rd, that's what they're trying to do. All gas stations. Mm -hmm. And so it's not good. 100% right. So January 9th is a meeting of that thing. Uh, the first, I don't know what the date is. It's the first Tuesday. I oh. bet it's January 2nd. I'm sorry. I have, I have 9 a.m. You're right. First Tuesday. You're right. I think it's January 2nd. It's the first Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be an important meeting for everybody in Homer Glen and Homer Township, <coughs> unincorporated, and Lockport. Because the people that live in Lockport, Homer Township, are going to get affected also. There's uh, six county board members that are involved with this. Because uh, we have two members from the Bolingbrook area that come out this far. And then we have the people that uh, have the uh, Lockport Joliet area that get the other part of it. And then most of it is in Jim Richmond and myself's area. But it's a, a real big deal, a real big deal. So will we have an opportunity to speak again at the yeah. end? Yeah. Okay. Vicki was there last time and she spoke. Angel, yeah, Angel was there. And like I said, they, they had listened to a lot of people and we changed two people's minds. Mm -hmm. So right now we have uh, 11 Republicans and two Democrats with us. And I think I can pick up more now because uh, <coughs> the more people come and explain how bad that is, the more the, you know, we, we stopped the solar panels at the county also in Frankfurt, knowing we're going to be sued. We stopped them anyway because it was bad for Frankfurt. And so, again, people came and screamed, and it happened. So coming to that meeting is not like a dog and pony show. You come to that meeting and you talk, and it does make a big difference. So remember that. So moving on, um, Tom Thomas, we move. Um, we're going to go into executive session. I need a motion to go into executive I'll make session. That motion. Can I recommend? And it's for a possible litigation. Thank possible. you. Yeah, it's yeah. better practice to say the particular yeah. reason. So that's okay. So, okay. So, okay. So go into closed session for possible litigation. I'll make that who would second that? Second. Trustee Clausen. All in favor? I think you got to call the roll. Well, we, we're going to go into it and then I'll call the roll, correct? No, you got to call the roll. Go call, call the roll on the vote. Oh, the roll. Yeah. oh, I'm sorry. And, and then we'll, you're correct, we'll introduce everyone on okay. the court. Okay. Uh, Trustee course. Rivera? Yes. Trustee Clausen? Yes. Trustee Shea? Yes. Trustee Bonomo? Yes. Supervisor Ballage? Yes. Okay, motion passes. So we are going into uh, open session. Oh, we're closed. Executive, 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 executive session, excuse me. Yeah, it's so uh, at 7.53 p.m. So we're going to uh, ask everyone to leave. Let everyone <coughs> leave, and then we'll start again. And then uh, we did have executive session, and there was no action taken in executive session. Um, and now that we're back into our regular board meeting, uh, we did move 4C, which is the holiday display program, uh, to uh, basically, uh, let's say 14 to now. <laughs> and um, so upon our executive session meeting, uh, we would like to make a motion as follows. So she's uh, going to read it, and then one of you guys is going to have to make the motion. All right, uh, a motion that nothing will go up at the township at any time unless accepted and owned by the township. I'll start that motion. I was just gonna no, we're just going to read it all. Okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, township employees are only authorized to put up anything at the township. We do not allow uh, for the freedom from religion to go up and do not accept this as a donation. Accepted do donations cannot have anything with contact information, uh, including Gmail, 
uh, sorry, excuse me, email, phone number, uh, et cetera, any kind of advertisements within the holiday program that would um, include, uh, I, I said that, emails, phone numbers, websites. Sorry, just give me one second to, um, um, uh, any kind of contact information. Um, and that, uh, let's see, this is an ordinance that we are gonna be creating um, for the holiday display program. Does anybody have any questions? Did I do anything? Did uh, we miss anything? Did I miss anything? Um, no, can I just point something out? The reason this has to be, uh, the reason this holiday um, display program had to be amended is because the guidelines that were already in place were not being followed. So we need to make the guidelines more clear, like um, we're going to do with this motion. So, uh, by the, by the pub, members of the public here, by the mem you're yes. referring to were not following the, guide I the existing guidelines. The so. existing guidelines were not being followed by uh, the members of the public. So mm -hmm. um, for safety reasons, it needs to be amended. Okay. And so, I, I just want to point out also um, in our discussion, a lot of it had to do with public safety. We have new landscaping out there and there's new wires underground. And when people start pounding stuff where they shouldn't, the only ones that know where everything is at is our maintenance guys. So unless you call Julie out there. But uh, when they're pounding a, a stake into the ground, they can get electrocuted if they crack a wire or something. So. It's a public safety matter also. But I uh, just I'm sorry. want to point okay. that out. It's not going to, that's not part of the ordinance or part of what it is, but I want to point that out. Okay, so, and one more thing I wanted to add to that motion is that the holiday display program will go from December 1st, well, approximately, I would just say actually, I'm sorry, from, um, let's say, Thanksgiving, which is usually. To nativity. Right, to uh, around, uh, to the Epiphany. <laughs> So Thanksgiving to the Epiphany. That will be the time frame for the holiday display uh, program. So we got, Mike, did you make a motion? No, I have the on so if you're ready for She's it. She's ready. All right, I'll start the motion. I'll second. Is there any other discussion on this motion? <clears throat> uh, no. No, other discussion? Okay, I'll take a roll call. Uh, Trustee Rivera? Yes. Trustee Shake? Yes. Trustee Bonomo? Yes. Trustee Clawson? Yes. Supervisor Ballard? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, with that being done, we can uh, have a motion to adjourn. I'll start that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Any nays? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.